Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up and I'm back today with a Friday Sews for you. I haven't done one of these for a while since I've been doing my Stitched Up Weeklies, but I did say last week, if you watched my Stitched Up Weekly, that I was going to do one this week and then we were going to lead straight into Vlogmas. However, I haven't done one because Vlogmas starts on Sunday and I thought, you know what, you'd end up with two videos from me which is a lot of editing and a lot of prepping etc and I've got my granddaughter here with me this weekend as well and I just thought you know what I'm just going to miss it this time so apologies for that but instead I thought I would come to you today with a Friday sews and it's Black Friday edition so yes Black Friday I know it's contentious for lots of people isn't it but it's a day of sales if you are interested and if that's your kind of thing. Now, I did originally think about going through what I've seen in the community for you and putting a bit of a little list together. But to be honest, it wouldn't be a little list because there are absolutely tons and tons of offers on today. And I know some people don't want to go into all that and that's absolutely fine. But for those of you that are interested in picking up some fabric or notions or a pattern that you've been after for a while and think that you might be able to get a few pennies off it during Black Friday. I thought what I would do is put a little list together, leave it down in the description box for you below of the offers that I've seen if you are interested. If you're not, you can just bypass it all together. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But I have bought something in the Black Friday sale. I have placed an order with Fabric Godmother because they have 20% off, which is just incredible. I don't think I've ever seen them have 20% off. Yeah, there are a few fabrics of theirs that I have been spying for quite some time that I've really liked and I haven't bought because you know the majority of the time their fabrics are not inexpensive but they are beautiful quality and they do a lot of their own exclusive designs now as well don't they which is just lovely so I've had my eye on a few fabrics for some time and this 20% off is too good to miss so I have bought some obviously they're not here yet but I will show you probably during vlogmas yeah that is all I've bought so far but it's still early in the Black Friday weekend thing. Um, there are a couple of patterns I've got my eye on as well, which I might look at, but I'm trying not to buy any more fabric, although Rainbow Fabrics have got a big offer on this evening. I don't know what it's in, what's in it yet because they've said that they're going to be put, putting a lot more new fabrics in. Don't know about that one, but we'll I will try to resist. I think, you know, if you don't want to spend any money during Black Friday, the best thing to do is just stay off the internet altogether, isn't it? But anyway, I always think it's difficult with it being right close to Christmas, isn't it? Because I'm trying to save the pennies for Christmas presents and gifts and things. Talking of patterns, and it's not part of the Black Friday sale, I did buy some patterns from Sew Direct last weekend. So I'm a VIP member of Sew Direct. Every so often they do like a weekend sale. I think if you're a VIP member, you normally get about 40% off. But when they do one of these sales, they, they give you a little bit extra. So I did buy some new patterns last weekend and I was shamelessly influenced by the lovely Gina who is Gina Seams because she's just made the most beautiful beautiful dresses and I asked her which pattern she'd used and she replied so I had to buy it basically anyway I will show you what I got I've got a few here I think I got one two three four five patterns altogether so the first one is this one Vogue V2064 this absolutely gorgeous dress i think that is stunning i really do i am hoping it's for jersey fabrics um i didn't even look at that yeah stretch knits that's that's good to know because that's what i envisage this in i think it will just be lovely for winter and i can wear it with boots etc so i've got lots of jerseys in my stash that this would work really well for but i really want to make that i think it's gorgeous i also got this one as well which is not very seasonally appropriate but while the offer was on, I thought I would get it. So it's this one, V2042. This will be lovely for next summer, I think. I think the short version's great. The long version's lovely as well, but I, yeah, I love the short version. So that's going to be nice for spring and summer. Hopefully next year we will get a nice summer. And then I got this one, which is McCall's M 
8533. I love this jacket. I love this version. I don't think I would go for stripes like that, but that's just my personal taste. But I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I love the fact that it's cropped and yeah, really nice. It looks very simple and straightforward because there's no fastenings on it. So yeah, love that one. And then the next two are the ones that were influenced by Gina. So this one is Bird 6442. She's made this version here and I just think it's stunning. I think it would be beautiful as a Christmas day dress. Although, if I'm perfectly honest, I don't think I'm going to have time to make that during Christmas. But yeah, it's for woven fabrics, but it's absolutely stunning. A nice sort of sequin, sparkly fabric look beautiful in that wouldn't it but I love this version as well with the sleeves it makes it more sort of daytime it doesn't it so yeah that's gorgeous and then this one which is McCall's M8150 so what she did was she's made this skirt and then she's used like a surplus bodice wrap over bodice from another pattern to attach to it and the result is just amazing so I have got that pattern as well to replicate something very similar so yes they're the patterns that i bought last weekend and then that's been it really i have made three things this week and not a single one of them is any kind of clothing i've really been into the sort of gifting and yeah i'm getting into the christmas spirit in that respect with wanting to make the christmas crafts and the christmas gifts and things so Anyway, last weekend, I decided to finally get on the Bestie Bag bandwagon because lots of people have been making this recently and it's such a lovely pattern. I've seen the lovely Tamlins and Ruans. She made it at our weekend away, which is a couple of weeks ago now. I can't believe that's gone so quick. And I was so impressed with how they looked that I thought I need to make it myself. So I have. And I did briefly show this on my weekly vlog last week, but I thought I would show you it here. So this is my version. It's just black, plain black. So you've got, it's like a crescent shape bag, but it's got a, you know, a big panel at the bottom as well. So it really gives, gives it lots of room. I've used this orange zip, which I had in my stash. And then inside is this gorgeous fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. It's like a cotton sateen. So I, and, and the Tesco receipt as well, because I've been using it. So I um, interfaced all of the lining pieces, including the pockets and also the outer pieces as well. I've used a self strap because I was undecided whether to use one of the webbings the strap you know the strap webbings that you can get I thought that might look nice but then I because I was going for this zip I thought actually just keep it very plain and that little pop of colour I think just really sets it off and then you open up the bag and you've got that riot of colour inside which I just think works really well so I didn't use any hardware because I needed the 38 millimeter strap slider and I don't have any of those in my stash so I just did the tie version which still works really well and if I put it on you can see how that looks I'll just zip it up so you can see it better but yeah it's just it's a really nice size this is the medium size and yeah I really like it it's it's just a lovely bag and I definitely want to make another I went plain black because I thought I would just be able to use it more because patterned bags are sort of a little bit more awkward to style I think but you know with something that's plain like this it's much easier styling isn't it the only thing I didn't like about it if I'm honest is it has two lots of pockets so you have one that is um on one side which is just a single pocket and it's obviously double faced and then the other side of the bag you have another pocket but this one isn't double face. This one, it tells you just to fold over a couple of times and top stitch it down. And then, but you're left with seeing the wrong side of the fabric, or in my case, the interfacing. So I don't understand why it tells you to do that. Next time I make it, I'm going to double face the other pocket as well, because I just think that's going to be a better look, if I'm honest. And the other thing 
it doesn't tell you to do as well when you make the zipper tabs which are i don't know if you can see it but this bit here is the zipper tab when i've made zipper tabs before which basically are to enclose the ends of the zipper before you stitch it into the rest of the bag you sort of fold it over the zipper stitch it and then pull it back so you've got the zipper entirely enclosed in the zipper tab with this unless i read the instructions wrong you just apply it to the top of the zipper and there is nothing underneath so i don't it's it's a bit i don't think that's a very good finish if i'm honest so inside here this bit here doesn't have is raw there's no zipper tab on this bit and yeah i don't understand why why it does that if i'm honest so i think next time i'm going to do it the way i learned when i went to sean's bag making retreats because she has it so the zipper tab is enclosed between two sorry the end of the zipper is enclosed between two zipper tabs and then you get a really neat finish and it just looks better so yeah so anyway that's the only negatives i would say about it otherwise it's a great pattern it sews up really nicely and the instructions are really good even though i didn't follow them and had to unpick because that's me <laughs> but you know i got there in the end and it was a lovely sort of afternoon's work really i definitely definitely will make it again and i really recommend it there is a large version as well which i would like to make that because i think that would be a great sort of overnight bag to use um and i think they do a mini version as well and i was going to do a sew along when i cut this out i'd planned to do a sew along and i ummed and about it because obviously i was using black fabric and sew alongs are not the best in black fabric for, for you to see as a viewer so but i thought you know what i'll just go with it and see how we get on and i'd started filming a lot of it and then made loads of mistakes because i didn't read the instructions so i ended up where i just abandoned it and thought you know what let's just get this sewn up properly and make sure it works as it's supposed to and then yeah i think now i'm i will do a sort of sew along with me rather than it won't be a tutorial as such it'll just be a sew along but i think i will do another one but with the changes that i want to make to it and yeah i'll do it in a different fabric that's a lighter one that's going to be easier to see now i know what i'm doing with it so yeah but i think i'm going to make the the large version and use it as an overnight bag i think that would be really good so yeah anyway that's the bestie bag really love that and then i wanted to make a pattern for a little gift to put in layla's stocking as a little stocking filler for christmas layla's my granddaughter if you don't know she is 20 months old now and since halloween she has been obsessed with bats she absolutely loves bats and so i just mentioned to my daughter that i'd found this pattern on etsy for a bat comforter and i'd got some leftover fabric this was entirely made from scraps in my stash and thought it would be a really nice opportunity to just make a little comforter for us so that's what i've done so this is this is said said little bat comforter i mean how gorgeous is that so now I'm not going to leave a link to the pattern because this pattern actually had a little bit of money off. So it was, I think it was about £5.17. It should have been about £8. But I was happy to pay that, don't get me wrong. But when it came, when obviously I downloaded it, I actually thought it was very, very amateurish, if I'm honest. Because what you get is you get a two sheet printout of the actual pattern pieces but they are literally hand hand sort of drawn with a sharpie with no grain lines on um, and it also doesn't tell you how many of each pattern piece to cut so that was the first thing and then the next thing was the tutorial and the tutorial for it is basically just typed which is don't get me wrong I'm not saying these things should be professionally written with lots of lovely graphics on and all that kind of stuff but it was very it was clearly very obviously somebody's just lit literally typed this up on a, a computer at home and that is what you get and the instructions were not very good i'm going to be honest if you don't have much sewing under your belt you would struggle making this from the instructions because it just wasn't very clear um 
I think the designer English isn't her first language either so the translation wasn't very good but yeah there was just a few bits in it that really weren't very straightforward now at the end of the day this is not a massively complex thing to make but I just think yeah it wasn't worth the money if I'm honest so I'm not going to leave a link to it but there are lots of these kinds of things out there and yeah have a look yourself if you are interested but basically this fabric is actually a french terry it's a charcoal french terry that i bought from rainbow fabrics i got three meters of it a couple of months back to make my husband some joggers which i did and i've got some left over so i thought i would use it for that it does say in the tutorial to use plush which plush would be amazing because it's really soft isn't it but this is okay and i thought you know what i don't want to be buying more fabric just to make something like this i thought i'm just going to use what i've got in my stash so i'd got some leftover french terry it's lovely and soft and i used that basically and then the head is stuffed with toy stuffing and the ears are not stuffed they're just stitched on at the side of the head with hand stitches i've embroidered the eyes the nose is made out of some felt that again was in my stash embroidered the the mouth and the little fangs as well and then the little legs at the bottom the little feet are it's all part of this pattern piece and then all you do is put a bit more stuffing in the feet and then tap, you put a few running stitches around the top just to hold them in place and then i have embroidered no i haven't i have stitched using embroidery thread on my sewing machine i've just stitched the webs on and i just hand drew these on to be honest they were very straightforward to do they look a bit messy from the other side because they've been done on my sewing machine but i don't think layla's going to be that bothered if i'm honest but yeah it's really cute so so that's the little bat that probably took me a couple of hours to do i would say the longest bit was actually embroidering the face but yeah i hope she likes it anyway <laughs> i'm sure she will so that was an evening's work i think monday i did that monday evening when i got home from work which was really nice i love these kinds of little projects where you know you've been at work all day and you've had your tea and this time of year you either slump in front of the telly don't you doing nothing just scrolling on your phone or whatever for the rest of the evening or you can just think right i'm just gonna go make something small and craft like that I can you know get finished in a couple of hours and that's that's it's really satisfying so yeah I really enjoyed doing that and then the last thing I have made this week is a knitting project bag so a couple of years ago when I went to Cornwall and met up with my gorgeous friend Andy who is so Andy sews who isn't vlogging much at the minute by the way which is really really annoying but Andy if you're watching please get back to it because we do miss you but anyway she gifted me a gorgeous project bag for knitting now andy is a real fervent knitter she knits loads and she's so quick at it and i do knit but i'm just not very quick and i put things down i pick them back up again and yeah it just takes me forever but she gifted me this gorgeous project bag that she had sewn it's absolutely beautiful and i remember telling me that it was a tutorial from a youtube channel called easy to sew i will link to it down below so when i went into my local boys a couple of days ago i picked up this gorgeous christmas cotton and i thought i'm going to make myself another one because i've been sorting out i mentioned that i've got my granddaughter here and my daughter and her partner as well for the weekend and they were coming late on on wednesday and they're staying till monday so I was in complete mum mode, you know what I mean, where you are tidying up and cleaning and all that kind of stuff on Wednesday when I was off work. And I was sorting through a lot of my knitting and knitting projects, etc. And I thought, I really do need some more project bags to sort of contain each individual project instead of sticking them in um, just carriers, which is really, really rubbish. So, yeah, so I got this gorgeous cotton and I thought, you know what, I'm going to have a go at making a project bag. So I have and this is it here so this is my little project bag this fabric is really lovely they do work together so you've got this gorgeous sort of mistletoe 100 percent cotton and then this fabric at the top has stags on and yes 
the stags are upside down. So that's totally my fault because it's the first time I've made it. And I showed my husband, I said, what do you think to my project bag? And he said, oh, that's lovely, Rachel. He says, are they supposed to be upside down? And I went, no, they're not, but you know. Yeah, so the stags look, can you see? There you go, look. Hopefully you can see a stag there. But it's fully lined inside. I've got a project in here at the minute. I just used some white cotton in my stash, but actually I think it would probably look better if this fabric was all in the inside as well. But yeah, it's just fully lined with some white cotton. And then you have little handles on as well, little straps. And then you put some drawstring in as well, which just pulls like that. And then you've got a nice little project bag. Really like it, really straightforward. The tutorial is great. I can highly recommend it and yeah i'd love to make another i've got plenty of fabric left i bought half a meter of each colorway and there's plenty left to get another one out of so i would say you could probably get two out of two of these out of half a meter so you probably could i mean i don't know about getting them out of a fat quarter because the the width of this is 14 inches i don't know how wide a fat quarter is maybe you could but yeah half a yard half a meter of two fabrics will get you two of these i would say for definite so yeah nice little project bag that was a lovely afternoon's make on wednesday and yeah i'm gonna make more i think this is just such a lovely lovely little size which brings me to knitting so just hang on two seconds so I've already mentioned that I don't knit a lot or when I do knit, I always knit during winter. I love knitting during winter, but I have so many projects on the go and I put them down and then I'll pick them up months later. And I mentioned a couple of months ago that I was knitting this cardigan for Layla and I decided earlier this week, I only had one sleeve left to do and thought, do you know what, I'm just going to get it done so that while she's here, I can get it finished and then it can go with her because otherwise she's going to end up growing and it being too small so anyway this is it here i have finished it more or less it's just been blocking the last couple of days and now it's completely dry and i just need to weave in the ends finish up the underarms where there's a few little gaps etc and then put a button on it just has one button at the top that's all so this is the winter rose cardigan by i think it's winter rose by oja patterns it's got this gorgeous sort of detail down the front which looks really complicated but it's actually really simple to do the rest of it is just stockinette and you've got a garter stitch hem on the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of the hemband. The yarn is Stylecraft Grace, which is like a fuzzy yarn. It's got some acrylic in it, but it does have a bit of wool in it as well. And yeah, it's really, really pretty. So I do have a button that I've already got. In fact, I'll get that and I'll show you just two secs again. That's the button that I've got, which I think is gonna look, if I just put this on me here. This is a size 12 to 18 months I've done. I think that's going to work really nicely. So yeah, it just literally goes at the top like that. Um, so you've just got that one button at the top. Can I come back and show you? Yeah, so this is the 12 to 18 months. I think the pattern goes up to 18 to 24. I've just got to weave in the ends now because I've got all these ends to do. But as I say, I needed to block it first and it's done. And then hopefully she will be able to wear that. That would be super. So yeah, it's, it's been a really, really nice week, but I haven't done any dressmaking. I've done some sewing, as you've seen, but no dressmaking this week. I am going to be tied up this weekend with the family, so I don't know how much sewing time I'm going to get, although they have just gone out for a couple of hours now to see a friend. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've got some time to myself now. So I might get a little bit done, but I want to get this cardigan finished first. And then, yeah, we shall see. We'll see what the rest of the day brings. So I hope you have a lovely weekend, whatever you're up to. We are heading to see some Christmas lights this evening. There is, you know, one of these sort of illuminated display events on 
at Temple News in Leeds. So we are heading to that later, which I'm really excited about. So hoping to take some footage and take Layla and see what she thinks to that. That's going to be exciting. So looking forward to doing that. And then, yeah, just a nice weekend with my family. So whatever you're up to, I hope you have a good one. Vlogmas starts on Sunday. I am really excited about it. I've had a few people already message me asking me if I'm doing it. And I know loads of people are doing it this year. I am going to try and keep it really short this year, each episode, because I totally appreciate that there will be lots and lots of vlogmases for people to choose from. And it's really hard fitting everybody's in. I totally get that. So I'm not going to be doing really long episodes <laughs> because it's just a time thing, isn't it? And I'm just conscious that I want everybody to be able to support all the vloggers that are doing vlogmas this year so yeah i'm looking forward to that anyway it's going to be intense but it's going to be good fun so i will see you soon take care bye <laughs>